So, so this is a, a fast slide. I, I don't really expect you to make too much of this. We'll start. We'll talk about. Um, I'll tell you what you, you should pay attention to. Number one. There are a bunch of variables that are called state variables that define the equilibrium state of a system. You say, oh, the gas in this room. <coughs> if I talk about the state of the gas in this room, I can tell you things about it. I can measure the pressure of the gas. I can measure the temperature of the gas. The pressure of the gas, the, the gas in this room has some pressure, uh, approximately one atmosphere. There's a temperature in Kelvin, it's approximately 300 Kelvin. There's a volume, I don't know what it is approximately. 10 by 10 by 20 meters, maybe? 2,000 cubic meters? Whatever the, I don't know what the volume of the room is, but you know, something like that is the volume. Internal energy. There is some energy in bond energy and thermal energy in the gas in this room. It's a number. If the state of the room changes, then that could be the thing that changes. The internal energy. Number of particles. There's a certain amount of gas in this room and it's made up of a cer certain amounts of certain types. There's a certain amount of argon. There's a certain amount of helium. I'm not sure it's not very much, but there's a certain amount. There's a certain amount of uh, H2O in this room, gas. Certain amount of N2. So the number of particles is, is a state variable. It, it's fixed for the state of the system in this room. In fact, all of these things are just numbers that you can measure or calculate given the state of the gas in this room. You can change the state of the gas in this room by having it interact with things from the outside. If it's an equilibrium state, you can only change it by having it interact with something from the outside. If the gas in this room is not in an equilibrium state, then it will change all by itself until it gets to equilibrium. Anyone want to identify a possible non equal theoretically possible non-equilibrium state of the gas in this room, which is then going to fix itself all by itself? Any guesses as to, uh, there's uh, of course many, many ways of doing this. Yeah? Maybe like the air I breathe out of my body might have a higher temperature and then just immediately will... So, so different temperatures in different locations. He breathes out, the air right in front of him is at a higher temperature. What's going to happen? Is that going to stay? The air in front of him is going to stay at a higher temperature? No, it's going to, the heat's going to, heat will, will move away. I hate to say move exactly because heat is not stuff. It's just how fast things are moving around. Basically, a little bit of bond energy, a little bit of potential energy, I should say. Not bond energy, but a little bit of potential energy as well as kinetic. So, so the energy, the thermal energy will be higher right near him and because it's higher right near him, that'll be a high temperature compared to the surroundings, which is a low temperature. And so heat will be transferred from the gas that's at a high temperature to the gas that's at a lower temperature around. You can, you can be really dramatic, of course, and have big changes that are, this is a perfectly realistic change, it happens all the time. Here's a really unrealistic one. Suppose we find ourselves with all the gas molecules on this side of the room. So all of you over here, you're having a tough time. All the gas molecules are over, are you over here? Two atmospheres, tough time too. Um, all the gas molecules are over here, and what happens next? <laughs> It finds an equilibrium in a hurry. Uh, they, they spread out, they spread out, and spread out, and pretty soon, and, and you would feel a massive wind of the spreading in this direction. Of course, there's no molecules over there, so none of them are going to be coming this way, and so you're going to feel yourself knocked against the wall. Um, they will, this room will come to equilibrium. So this is a statement about equilibrium states. The equilibrium, and I should have written it, I thought I had. The equilibrium state of a thermodynamic system is determined by all of these variables. 
you only need to name three of them, generally. For a pure system, suppose the air in this room was pure nitrogen instead of mostly nitrogen, then I'd only have to tell you three variables to fix the state of the system. I could say, oh, let's do pressure one atmosphere, temperature 300 Kelvin, and number of moles of molecules, um, 2,000. I, I don't even know what to, get, what to guess. Once I tell you those three things, nothing else needs to be discussed. If you know the pressure, the temperature, and the number of molecules, then you know other things. Like volume. If I know the pressure and the temperature and the number of moles, let's see if I, no, I've done that backwards. Uh, if I know <laughs> pressure, if I know the pressure and the number of moles, N, and the temperature, I can tell you the volume of the gas in this room. It's an ideal gas law. It's an equation of state. Every equation of state connects the variable, the three variables that you know something about with any other variable that you want to calculate. That's what equations of state do. This is one of them. I know three variables, the number of moles, the temperature, and the pressure. With those three variables, I get another variable, another state variable, the volume. How about e-thermal? Can I tell you what e-thermal is? I know the number of moles, I know the temperature, and I know the pressure. Can I tell you what e-thermal is? I'm hoping you say, absolutely, you can tell me. I can tell you what e-thermal is. E-thermal is just the number of modes times 1 half kb times the temperature. The number of modes has an n in it. It has a number of moles in it. Modes per molecule times a constant. Modes per molecule times a constant. If I tell you the temperature and the number of moles, you can tell me what e-thermal is. This is another equation of state. It tells you something about it, th the state of the system. If you know some of the variables, you can, use, you can calculate other variables. So there's two equations of state you can get. Another state variable we'll talk about, I'm going to name it right now, is entropy. If I know these three variables for, the, for an ideal gas, I can calculate the entropy of that ideal gas. In fact, any function of state variables is a state variable. I can take the internal energy, oh I didn't actually write that. I set it up here. Total internal energy we call U, I've used it before. U is bond energy plus thermal energy for us because atomic energies and nuclear energies don't change around. But you can put together any state variables you want to into some function, add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, and or take derivatives, and you end up with another state variable. Heat capacity at constant volume is a state variable. The air in this room right now has only one heat capacity at constant volume. There's only one value of the heat capacity at constant pressure. This H is called enthalpy. If I take the internal energy, that's one state variable, and add pressure times volume, that's two more state variables. Pressure times volume, why would I add that to the internal energy? Well, for one thing, pressure times volume has the same units as energy. So, that's good. If it has the same units as energy, then, then I can add it to an energy and I at least get something sensible. I've added things that have the same units. 
And the other thing is this turned, enthalpy turned out to be, and you'll talk about this today, I think, or, or ne in this next DL, I think. Um, enthalpy is a really useful state variable, one you've probably seen before. In fact, we've used it at the beginning of the year. 